What's being described as an inevitable coming crash in the office sector is all over the news lately, but not many of these articles or videos actually explain why this might happen and how this might end up playing out within the commercial real estate industry. Just because occupancy rates or rents in a market are struggling doesn't automatically mean that impending doom is on the horizon, but there are a few things that all seem to be coming together at once that could create a significant amount of distress in the very near future. So to go into more detail on what specifically is happening in the office sector right now and the drivers that are fueling this massive collapse that everyone's predicting, in this video we'll break down the math that's behind this potential crash and how all this might play out given current market conditions. So at this point, it's pretty obvious that office real estate has struggled a lot since 2020 with the incredibly fast shift to a work from home culture that was massively accelerated when the entire world shut down. Back in March of 2020, a lot of companies stepped back and started to reevaluate their office footprints and their need for physical real estate long term, with many announcing indefinite work from home policies and real estate expansion plans being cut back or eliminated. And originally, a lot of people believed that this would just be a short term trend and people would be back in the office when things went back to normal. But even as employers have tried to get their workforce back in the office in recent years, employees have pushed back in a really big way. This has led to office utilization rates that are still less than 50% of their pre-2020 levels and vacancy rates that have risen to over 20% in some of the biggest office markets in the country, including Chicago, Atlanta, Dallas, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Seattle. And at the same time that office investors have seen demand fall off a cliff, property owners have also had to deal with the material impacts of inflation on property operations with massive increases in labor costs, material costs, utility costs, and insurance premiums. And unlike other commercial property types like retail and industrial, it's relatively rare for office tenants to reimburse the landlord for their pro rata share of a property's operating expense load. These things have all contributed contributed to net operating incomes on many office deals dropping considerably over the last few years, and at the same time that this has been happening, the Fed has also been raising interest rates at one of the fastest paces we've ever seen. Many of these office deals were purchased with loans with only a three, five, or seven year loan term, meaning that trillions of dollars in commercial real estate debt is scheduled to mature over the next three years, and all of these factors coming together at once are creating almost a perfect storm in the commercial real estate markets that could result in a lot of distress. And to put some hard numbers behind these statements, to use some really basic figures, let's take a look at an office property located in Los Angeles, California, that was purchased for $100 million back in 2018 at a 65% LTV ratio and a five year loan term. And assuming this loan was full term interest only, which is not uncommon in commercial real estate, the outstanding loan balance at the end of that five year period would be that same initial loan amount of 65% million. But in today's market environment with significantly higher interest rates and significantly higher cap rates that are driving down property valuations, what happens when that loan ends up maturing is where things might start to get pretty tricky. If the investor decides to sell in 2023, they're likely taking a loss on that disposition. And for many levered properties with 60 to 70% of the capital stack coming from debt and a lender that has payment priority when a property is sold, this could result in substantial losses of equity by going this route. For example, on this deal, if we were to use CBRE's cap rate survey data for the Los Angeles office market with class A office properties trading at cap rates between 4.5% and 5.5% in the second half of 2018, we could assume this deal was purchased at a 5% cap rate, meaning that the property was generating $5 million per year in NOI at the time of acquisition. 
But according to CBRE's most recent cap rate data, at the end of 2022, Class A stabilized office properties were now trading at cap rates between 6.25 and 7% in downtown Los Angeles, meaning that this same property that was valued at $100 million back in 2018 would now need to be operating with anywhere from a 25 to 40% increase in NOI over this 2018 value just to get back to that $100 million price point. And even though asking rents for Class A office properties in Los Angeles have increased by about 15% during this time, if we take a look at CPI changes between September of 2018 and April of 2023 in this market, CPI has increased by 19.4% during this time, and vacancy rates have also increased in the market from roughly 14% in 2018 to 19% in 2023. And if we apply these market-wide asking rent and CPI growth figures to our revenue and expense assumptions on the deal and also incorporate the uptick in vacancy the property very likely saw during this time, assuming a 40% expense ratio going into the acquisition, this would result in an NOI for the property in 2023 of $5.03 million, just a 60 basis point increase from 2018 value. And if we assume that this property is now going to be valued at a 6.5% cap rate in the market, this drops the valuation of the deal today to just $77.4 million, representing not only a 23% decrease in property pricing overall, but also a 65% decrease in investor equity value if they were to sell. And if investors want to avoid a 65% capital loss and hold on to the deal long term and refinance the property, things don't look much better. And if we were to assume a 1.35x required debt service coverage ratio using a 6% interest rate today and a 25-year amortization period, this property would now only be able to support a $48.2 million loan amount, creating a funding gap at refinance of $16.8 million and requiring equity investors to come out of pocket for the difference. And this $16.8 million value represents over 48% of the investor's original equity contribution into the deal. So to put this into perspective, this is like asking an investor who cut a $100,000 equity check back in 2018 to cut another $48,000 equity check in 2023 just to support a floundering property today with lagging fundamentals. And with over $1.5 trillion of commercial real estate loans set to come due in the next three years, according to TREP data, this is very likely going to lead to a flood of office properties coming to the market at distressed property pricing or these investors simply giving these properties back to their lenders. And with the risk of this starting to happen on a very large scale in the very near future, this is why there's so much concern right now around a potential crash in the office sector. And even though this might be less pronounced in other asset classes throughout the industry, multifamily and retail also run the risk of this becoming an issue. Now, if interest rates start to come back down later this year or in 2024, this situation might start to look a little bit different. But as things stand right now, this is where the biggest source of distress might end up coming from and the math behind how this might materialize on a property by property basis. So I hope this was helpful to get a little bit more insight into what's actually happening in the commercial real estate markets right now. And if you want to learn more about how to analyze commercial real estate investment opportunities that might come up as a result of all this pending distress, as always, make sure to check out our all-in-one membership training platform, Breaking a CRE Academy. A membership to the Academy will give you instant access to over 120 hours of video training on real estate financial modeling and analysis. You'll get access to hundreds of practice Excel interview exam questions, sample acquisition case studies, and you'll also get access to the Breaking a CRE Analyst Certification Exam, which covers topics like real estate pro forma and development modeling, commercial real estate lease modeling, equity waterfall modeling, and many other real estate financial analysis concepts that will help you prove to employers that you have what it takes to tackle the responsibilities of an 
analyst or associate at a top real estate firm. And if you like this video and want to see more content on this channel on current market events, make sure to hit the like button and let me know. And let me know in the comments what you see happening in the office market specifically over the next one to three years. As always, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you found this helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to see more videos like this every single week. And I'll see you in the next video.